Hey everybody, welcome to the third video that we're doing on the Westminster Shorter Catechism. Uh, today we're going to talk about question three. Uh, let's just start off with um, going back and looking at question one, which is, what is the chief end of man? And the answer to that is man's chief end is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. Here we learn that there's a reason for us being here, and that reason is God. Uh, we are created in his image. And due to man being self-centered instead of God-centered, led to the fall into the world that we live in today. And um, we even saw where Jesus sought to glorify God. Uh, we are called to glorify God by reflecting his glory through everything that we do. So we can have priorities in life, but in those priorities, God should be in every one of those. Um, so then the next question we, we went to was question two. Uh, which kind of let off a of one. We knew we're to glorify God, but how are we to do that? Is there an instruction book? Well, there is. So let's look at question two, which says, What rule has God given to direct us how we may glorify and enjoy him? And the answer to that is, The word of God, which is contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments, is the only rule to direct us how we may glorify and enjoy him. So here we learn the scripture is the word of God. Is his holy and inerrant word. The Bible is infallible. The Bible is sufficient by itself. We learned that things like the Apostles' Creed, the Nicene Creed, other creeds, uh, this Westminster Shorter Catechism, it's Bible study guides, they're all good tools to help teach us, but they're all rooted in the scriptures and held far below the actual scripture, the actual word of God was without the word of God, they're nothing but pieces of paper with words on them, meaningless words on them. So that brings us to today's third question, which is, what do the scriptures principally teach? The scriptures principally teach what man is to believe concerning God and what duty God requires of man. So does this mean the Bible contains everything that we need to know? Does it contain world geography? Does it contain algebra? Uh, maybe it tells us how to drive a car. No, it doesn't tell us those things. Um, it doesn't even tell us everything Jesus did. Uh, the reason is it's not meant to. Uh, well, I'll actually read a passage here from John chapter 20, uh, starting in verse 31. It says, Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that God is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. So these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing we, we will seek to glorify God and have a life with him, enjoying him forever. Sounds a lot like the first question. But there's a second part to this. So it says the, the scriptures principally teach what man is to believe concerning God and what duty God requires of man. You may be saying, what duty? Well, that can't be right. Um, I'm saved by faith alone. Well, uh, Micah, in chapter 6 of Micah, it actually says the Lord requires us to do justice, to love kindness, to, and to walk humbly with your God. We're saved by faith when we're, when, excuse me, we, we are saved by faith, and when we are saved, we want to work for him. Just like we talked about in the first question, we're talking about glorifying God. We seek to glorify God because we want to. Um, when we look at this, this answer it starts off with what man is to believe concerning God. And I think that's been there on purpose to give us greater emphasis on that, that we are saved by faith in Jesus Christ. Um, and without that, works mean nothing. Um, the world would have us think that there are good people in this world because they do good things. But that doesn't mean that they have been saved by the faith in Jesus Christ. And if they aren't, then they will not inherit the kingdom of God. Um, 
we read we can read in in John chapter four. Uh, it actually tells us that we must worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Matthew 7 tells us that works without faith is nothing. So just doing good things, being a good person doesn't save us. So it's important that we know that we first need to be what we need to believe concerning God. Second, we need to realize that when we have true faith, we must also do what God commands us to do. Uh, I'll use an example from James. Uh, James has many examples from a work standpoint, but James chapter 2, verse 17, it says, So also, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. So the true picture of Christian life is emphasized in what man is to believe concerning God and what duty God requires of man. So as you go on this week, um, I encourage you to ask yourself, do you know um, what you believe concerning God? And are you um, seeking to do the duty that the Lord requires of you? 